Good morning. My name is Kirsten Sokol. My pronouns are she, her. I am a member of this congregation and also a worship associate and the book club coordinator at the Unitarian Universalist Area Church at First Parish in Sherburn. Now, let's begin our sacred worship this morning by taking a deep breath and letting it out. Welcome to this loving community. Come in bringing all of who you are. Bring your wounds and aching hearts, your pain too numb to feel. There are healing waters here to ease your troubles. Let go of the expectations placed on you by others and those you have placed on yourself. May you touch hands with those you love. May you experience awe, love, and humility here. May you see something of beauty and feel a sense of wonder. May you know that each of us contributes to the beauty of the whole, bringing all that you are and all that you love to this hour together. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Fellow travelers, fellow iconoclasts, being here on a Sunday morning, a beautiful day, because that's what you are. You like breaking all the rules by being in an old, beautiful, dusty, newly plastered, newly accessible space, right? You guys don't seem that, come on, let's go. I know the main reason you're here is for all the announcements, right? But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wave to everybody who's watching from afar. Good morning, my friends who are watching from afar or close by on the screens. My name, by the way, is Reverend Nathan. I'm one of the ministers here. Uh, privileged to be with you here in my starting my 22nd year. And I look younger every year, do I not? Yeah. So we have a few announcements. Just first of all, just some logistical things. If you're new or if you haven't been here in a while, if you'd like um, one of us to read a prayer card during... Our, uh, our prayer time, they're right over there to my left and your right. Just fill that out and put it in the basket. You can also light a candle, you can see over there. Please, friends, we have a whole list of ways to participate in worship. You can sign up for flowers as a, an aside. There's an actual live cricket in the flowers today. <laughs> or a cicada, it's one of the two. Um, we'll see what happens later on. Patents, thank you. Like, it's like, yeah, it's incredible. Like. Just listen for a second. Just listen. Can you hear it? Yeah, right? Okay. Um, and you can also sign up to light our chalice, which is right here. Uh, newcomers, there is a blue card. There should be a blue card in your pews. Friends, you just hold it up. And this is a way that you please fill that out and, pl and put it, if you'd like to, in the basket as it comes by later on during the service. This is a way that we get to know you, connect with you, send you the most amazing email you've probably ever gotten in your life that tells you about all the things that are happening. Um, so please do that. Now I'm going to move on to invitations. Are you ready to be invited to stuff? All right. So, uh, well, first of all, i got to say thank you. Katie Fresnelli, who's all the way up in our tech uh, station. Katie, thank you very much for doing your thing. Um, so a few things happening today. After worship from 12 to 12.30, uh, myself and uh, Ian uh, Evans, our intern, and maybe Rev. Joe will be here just in our sanctuary to any of you who are new or you just feel new or you want to feel new and you are curious about Unitarian Universalism, you want to be reminded about Unitarian Universalism, you want to ask about EUAC, this is your time just to come be together. So very chill, bring your coffee as long as you promise not to spill it, and we can be together for half an hour in here. Um, in Natick Center, Signs of love, you might have heard in the news, uh, Metro West Daily talked about this, about the um, anti-gay, a bunch of like signs went out to all these churches uh, over the summer in Natick. And so they're having a signs of love opportunity uh, today from 11.30 to 2, 113 Union Street. If you want to go to that, ask myself on the receiving line. And next week, we are blessing some animals. Blessing some animals at 4 o'clock out on the front yard. So you don't need to sign up. Uh, you don't need to have your pet sign up. Just come. Um, any animal? Uh, any friendly animal Halloween trick or treat. Any friendly animal on a leash or in a carrier. Okay? That's an important detail. 
That, by the way, goes for us, you and me too, right? Yeah. Um, and then save the date. Two weeks from now, we're doing this new thing this year called Lunch and Learn. We're going to feed you, and we're going to have a lot of different ways just to hang out and learn and grow together, okay? I have one last announcement invitation before we go to greetings, and that is, did you know that this church requires like 15 to 20 volunteers every single Sunday to, to do this? Did you know that? It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. And one of the things that uh, we need volunteers for the most are teachers. And did you know that each of you have something to share and something to teach? And did you know that especially people who, uh, who maybe don't have young people in their life in particular have maybe some energy for that kind of stuff? Because we are still in need of teachers these days. Our faith mission programming kicks off today. Reverend Joe has sent, I think, literally probably 400 emails this week. Um, and she's asked a lot of us to participate. So if you feel like you have the capacity to do that, it's not every single Sunday, there's different ways to serve, please experience me on bended knee, okay? For us to, this is a cooperative program. When I began here, if you had children, you had to teach. We don't currently make that expectation, but we do need you, friends. We do need you to, to participate as you're able to make our programs and make our young people uh, be able to be here in community with us, okay? So with that inv invitation, I invite us to greet our neighbors with warmth and welcome. Sarah and Cricket. <laughs> loose and loose and baby, you don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Loose and loose and baby, you don't have to carry the weight of the world in muscles and bones let go let go let go holy breath and holy name will you ease will you ease the pain holy breath and holy 
churches have a sit-stand hydraulic, like settings preset pulpit. That is amazing. Thank you, Bill and team who got this together. Invite us to join in our opening words. These are by Sherry Woodbury, and I invite you to respond. Welcome, who come in friendship, who long for genuine community. May you be graciously received here as your authentic self. Welcome, who come in curiosity, full of questions or simply open. May you embrace wonder and encounter new delights. Welcome, who come heavy with fatigue, weary from the troubles of the world or the troubles of your particular life. May you rest and be filled in this sacred space. Welcome, who come with joy for flowing rivers and gentle breeze, for changing skies and great trees. Peace of the world leave a lasting imprint in you. And in that spirit, I invite us to join in our opening hymn, which this morning is number 1000. If you really want the sheet music, it's in the teal hymnal, the very first one in there. I invite you to rise in body and spirit or raise your voices as we sing together. third verse. Thank you for remaining standing. Please remain standing for our chalice lighting. Uh, and our chalice lighter today is uh, Kaya Cornwoody. As Kaya lights our chalice, let us say together our covenant. Uh, both expressions of our life and faith here in this congregation. Love is spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek truth in love, and to help one another.
seated. Well, I invite any young folks or young at heart who would like to be close up for our Wonder Box time to come on forward. You can sit on the floor, you can sit on the stairs, or you can sit in the front pew if you really want to dangle your legs. Even for grown-ups, those front pews are very leg dangly. <laughs> Great. Our Wonder Box time is uh, set aside each service where there's something or several somethings in this box. Ah, quiet cricket. Where there's something or somethings in this box that connect to something about our service or our community or a special day. So today, Reverend Nathan, when he preaches, is going to be talking about how we carry heavy things. And I know for me, it's always easier to carry heavy things when I have help, when I have friends and I'm part of a team. And I love the team here at church, and we have somebody new on the team. This is Ian Evans. Some of you met him last week or in the weeks around this. Ian is our ministerial intern, which means he's here to learn as one of our ministers, as somebody becoming a minister. And he's here with us for two full years, so we wanted to make sure you get a chance to get to know him. And whenever you're going to a new place, you bring stuff with you, whether it's your memories or the things you've learned or the things that are people that are important to you. So we're going to hear about that from Ian. Ian, I'm going to pass this to you if you'd like to invite somebody up. Thank you so much. Um, so I have brought a few things that are meaningful to me today or that I feel like represent my life outside of this congregation. I was wondering, could I get a volunteer to open the Wonder Box? Can you open the water box? Okay, can you take one thing out of there? Oh, good choice. Thank you, Molly. Can you give that a squeeze? <laughs> yeah, so that is uh, a little robin. I love bird watching. Uh, that's actually one of the ways that my wife and I first met through bird watching. Uh, and so this is a little robin that's an accurate, uh, biologically accurate robin call. And I just love that sound. Uh, so that is one thing about me. I love bird watching. Can we get a volunteer for the next thing? Yeah. Oh, do you know what that is? Can you say what that is? It's a dice. How many sides are on that dice? 20. 20, that's a 20-sided dice, D20. Does anyone know what a 20-sided dice is for? Yeah. D&D, exactly, yep. So I, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, uh, and we need a 20-sided dice for that. And that is, that's one of the things I love doing in my free time. Uh, thank you so much. Can I get a volunteer for the next one? Yeah. Wonderful. What is that? Can you say what that is? It's a picture of you, your wife, and I'm guessing your kid. That is. That is a picture of me, my wife, Kyle, and my daughter, Wren. Uh, and we are at a, the new national park in West Virginia, New River Gorge. Uh, and I know it is probably hard for people in the congregation to see the picture, but you are welcome to come up after the service. It'll be up here. Uh, and I love them very much. They're kind of my whole world outside of this congregation. Um, so they're really important to me. And we have one more item. Joe, could you take Yeah, uh, Asher, can you get it from the back? Pretty big. Asher, can you say what that is? Another picture. Another picture. Do you know what Yeah. So I love watercolor painting. Um, and this is a painting that I did of uh, some hands holding the earth with the earth melting into the hands. It's kind of a, a symbolic picture of being a part of the world and the world being a part of me. Um, it looks scary. <laughs> yeah, being a part of the world can be pretty scary sometimes. <laughs> Uh, I, that is one of the ways that I relax and feel like part of myself is to do some watercolor painting. 
Thank you so much, Asher. Could you hand that to Joe? All right. If you got one of the items, could you go ahead and put it back in the box for me? On top of the box. Thank you, Joe. Perfect. I'm going to hand this back to Joe, and it was great uh, letting you all get to know me a little bit, and I hope you'll get to know each other a lot more in the coming two years. And so this week gives you some stuff to talk with Ian about, but hopefully you can tell him the things that you're into. Elias? <laughs> it's a fair point that Sully might go for the Robin, but I think he knows if I tell him that's not his. He learns which toys aren't his, but it's a, a good point. For those of you who can't see, there's a disability service dog laying right here, but he's, he's good. So today is our very first day of faith formation classes, and I woke up at 5 a.m. so energized and slightly worried, but mostly energized <laughs> about starting this year off with you all. Worried not because it's going to go bad. I just wanted to make sure everything was so good for you all because I care about you a lot. So we're going to tell you about which classes are happening and where you're going to so the congregation knows too. Um, and we'll start with our, um, first of all, there's a nursery available for anybody younger than pre-K that's right around this corner. So anybody at any time with young kids is welcome to bring them there. It is staffed by young adults, or by teens and young adults. So pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade are going to go with today with Courtney and Beth. Can I have you all come up here? So that is our spirit play class. That's going to be a chance to play and explore first through a story and then through your choice of activities. So if I could have first the kindergarten and pre-K, pre pre kindergarten, and the first graders go off with you all. You all can start heading out. And if you have a youngster in those classes, those ones we're going to ask you to pick up at the end of the service. So they will be around the hallway down back by Nathan's office. So you can pick up your youngsters there. All right, our second and third graders today are going to be led by Barb and Susan. That's our Free to Believe class, and that is a class that lets you explore a bunch of different UU values and stories and principles. Super fun. They're all going to the Spirit Play 2 classroom, which is over by the restrooms, and you can meet your youngsters down at coffee hour afterwards. Y'all can head off. And then today, our fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh graders are all going together to one big group. So fourth and fifth grade, you're going to be doing Justice Seekers. Sixth and seventh grade, you're doing How We Do You You. Today, you're going to combine together with Liz, Serena, and Jillian. So you all can head off. They're going to be today in the FAS room, which is that conference room right by that other door. So as you all leave, let's sing these, at least this group out with Go Now in Peace. Uh, one of my favorite books is about a future in which uh, someone can no longer hear the crickets and has to go off on a quest to find a place where crickets are still live, alive and thriving. So this is actually wonderful for me. <laughs> this is a time when we draw nearer to ourselves and to our centers. So. If you are, whether you're here in the sanctuary or at home, please join us for a time of calm meditation and quiet. Take a few nurturing breaths. We will now have our call to prayer. The words will be on the screens to my right and left.
as we are coming together today, many of us are carrying weights or joys on our heart, prayers for loved ones, joys of thanksgiving. We have a few of those today. You'll have to forgive me. I'm uh, trying to learn names as best I can. Uh, our first one comes, comes from the Paul and Wisniewski family for Lorraine Wisniewski, mother and grandmother. Lorraine was just diagnosed with a very challenging and rare blood disorder, which undoubtedly will create many complications. Please keep Lorraine in your heart. Our next one comes from Katie and Michael Fresnelli. Uh, this prayer is for Gordon, Michael's father. Please keep Gordon in your hearts today. We have a uh, prayer from Sandra Torres. The prayer is for my sweet father who passed peacefully this summer at the age of 94. Thank you, Sandra. This next one is a prayer for Sarah Taffney, daughter of Chris and Kathleen, who in August was injured in an accident. She's home and continuing her recovery, and we wish her the best. And now we have a prayer for the world. Prayers after the alter altercation and a shooting in Newton at a pro-Israel rally just this week, just a few towns over. The next prayer for the world is for all those in Springfield, Ohio, who are facing threats after um, uh, accusations that their pets were in danger from immigrants this week. And please light a candle for um, the prayers for the world. And please light a candle for the loved ones, which I totally forgot to do. You did? Wonderful. Great, you're on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> Man, all right. I love being part of a team. All right. Uh, the next one is a prayer of thanksgiving for our board of directors. Amen. Uh, and um, for this week, uh, for being part uh, and driving and uh, being part of a uh, retreat yesterday in Bedford. Um, thank you so much. And now right, light a candle of thanksgiving. And a thanks and prayer for the flowers today brought by Mark and Barbara Patton. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the cricket. I really appreciate it. Um, and when I asked Mark uh, what the flowers were in honor of, he said they were just for, he wanted to help out. Um, and what a great reason that is. So amen. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Barbara. Join me now in our pastoral prayer. Spirit of life, God of many names and no name, feel the weight of our burdens, the ones that we speak out loud, and also the ones that we carry in the smallest recesses of our heart, so hidden that even we cannot see it enough to name it. Those are often the heaviest of all. 
spirit of life that is here among us now, with us, between us, holding us. Help us to see that the way to carry a great weight is with many hands. Help us carry each other's burdens, though few things are as frightening as asking for help. We are here in community with each other. We are here praying with each other. Help us to know that we can ask each other for help, for a hand or for an ear. Help us see our unseen needs, name our unnamed burdens. Ask for the help that can feel impossible, and together may we lighten our load. May it be so, and amen.
pronouns are she and her, and I'm one of the worship associates. Today's reading is Heavy by Mary Oliver. At that time, I thought I could not go any closer to grief without dying. I went closer, and I did not die. Surely God had his hand in this, as well as friends. Still, I was bent, and my laughter, as the poet said, was nowhere to be found. Then said my friend Daniel, brave even among lions, it's not the weight you carry, but how you carry it. Books, bricks, grief. It's all in the way you embrace it, balance it, carry it. When you cannot and would not put it down. So I went practicing. Have you noticed? Have you heard the laughter that comes now and again out of my startled mouth? How I linger to admire, admire, admire the things of this world that are kind. And maybe also troubled. Roses in the wind, the sea geese on the steep waves, a love to which there is no reply. Gosh, how beautiful is that poem? How beautiful. It was a Friday, I remember, December 14th, 2012. I was working on my homily for his Music Sunday, it was long before Sarah was here, and my wife called me on my cell phone and said, have you seen the news? Yeah. And that was the day that Sandy Hook happened, the shooting there in the school. I remember that Sunday. I remember fielding the calls from many of you saying, what are you guys going to talk about today? I want my kids to, to know. Um, and I, I think I gave a sermon, a homily without any notes, in which I said, surely this will be a, um, a moment that changes things. Surely this will. And so just as the school year started, of course, we had another one of these events in Georgia. And it makes you, speaking of heavy things, how, you know, what to say, what to do, how to respond. Today, in our Beyond Our Walls offering, which is our new name for the generosity that, that you, you just give so much from yourselves to different organizations, we um, continue the promise that we made, I, th I think I made, I know I made to myself that day on December 14th, that Sunday, when I was here with you, uh, and you might have made to yourself about to not forget these things and to kind of just get numb to them, which is what happens when we're sort of hit by things coming at us all the time, to, to just do things. This organization, Sandy Hook Promise, is really terrific. It empowers kids to know the signs and unite all people who value the protection of children and take meaningful actions in schools and homes and communities to prevent gun violence. And I want you to know that every single dollar or quarter that you're able to give today goes to that organization, every single one. So if you'd like to do that, I encourage you to do it with all that you can. You can use the QR code, which Katie's put up there on the screens for us, and if you have cash, one of our welcome team members will come by and have that too. And if you're new and you'd like to fill out a blue card, you can put it in there as well. Thank you, friends, for the gift of your generosity to an important organization and continuing to live the promise. We have a great, beautiful song today. It's by the band called Bird Talker. This isn't Bird Talker. <laughs> These are our beautiful people. And it's called Heavy.
If you're lost and you're lonely, go and figure out why. Take a trip to your dark side. Go on and have a good cry. Cause we're all lonely. Yeah, we're, we're all lonely. lonely together. I want to see your sadness. I want to share your sin. I want to be your blood and I want to be let in. Don't you just, don't, don't we all just want to be together? together. Please. Are you tired? Are you weary of the hidden hate you've been holding? Hey, did you lose that love or have you never had it? Are you feeling sad because you did a bad thing? Hey, leave what's heavy. What's The only way to lose that fearful feeling Replace it with love that's healing Are you feeling fearful, brother? Are you feeling fearful, sister? Much thanks to you, Sean and Tim and Kathleen and to Sarah and to Bird Talker. Yeah. We did that um, song for those who remember right after uh, the year that um, I don't you remember the election year in 2016. I don't remember that at all. Um, that's when we did that song. Here are the words I am privileged to share with us every time. Uh, I get to share words with you and for you. Hello, cricket. Here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. 
Let's keep our hearts tender and our eyes soft and our words true. This is what you and I strive to be about. We know there's no answer but to love each other. We bear witness against destruction. And we gather here in this community to practice being the people that we say we want to be. We cannot do everything, but we can do something, and that something is never nothing. So as Leonard Cohen reminds us, ring the bells that still can ring. You have a bell inside of you. It's your heart. It's right there. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything, and you can say with me, that is how the light gets in. We had our board retreat yesterday. Um, Ian mentioned it was in Bedford. It was all day, and uh, I hadn't finished my sermon yet. And my wife said, uh, do you still got to work? So I went out to water because, you know, we hadn't had rain like in a month. And, uh, and I said, you know what? It's okay, though. Yeah, I just finished my sermon, but it's okay because I love doing that. I love it. I love thinking and feeling with you. And I wanted to tell you that a, a couple winters ago, uh, when we still had winter, a storm blew through and it dumped a lot of snow across our towns. After the storm was over, I went out and I bought a snowblower and I have not used it. <laughs> if the loss of winter and climate change is one of the things that's sort of weighing you down, as Mary Oliver says, I want you to, to note it because we'll be making a list later, okay? You already have your own list, by the way. You already have it. In our backyard behind our fence, there is a very large, giant ash tree. And it sends its arms and its branches spreading out over, over our yard and out um, behind and over the top of the dance studio where our daughter learned how to pirouette when she was eight. She's 21 now. And once after rehearsal, the instructor, we were outside in the parking lot, uh, asked me, and she pointed up, she said, is that tree safe? Which allowed me to pretend as though I were, was an arborist <laughs> because I know how to read Google, which told me that that kind of tree is a hardwood. It's a heavy wood, and it's known for its strength and its ability to carry the weight. You with me? Yeah, I said it's, it's a white ash, or is it black ash? Um, it's strong. It carries the weight, I told her. But then the storm came through, and when we woke in the morning and we opened the curtains to the white wonderland world, I looked out the back window to find that a branch from the ash tree had bent and broken under the burden of snow and speared itself into the ground from high above. I thought you said it was strong, said my spouse. I'm, listen, I'm just an internet arborist. <laughs> what do I know? You should go check the dance studio, she said. Remember that branch? And so through calf deep snow, I go check out the back gate and I peer over the fence. Keep looking, look above. There are smaller limbs all over the, the parking lot. But thankfully that branch, the one branch, the one that was carrying the weight of our worry was still there. It was amazing. I go back inside and I report the good news to, to her. I told you it was strong. You know, maybe if this ministry thing doesn't work out, I could be a tree guy. <laughs> <laughs> but there's cleanup to do. In fact, one of you came over uh, to help me with your chainsaw because I'm not allowed dangerous tools. <laughs> and Upon seeing the branch uh, 
Steve isn't here today, he said in a voice tinged with disappointment, you know, you made it out to be bigger. <laughs> and I said, yeah, it's called preacher's license. <laughs> But what was accurate was that it was heavy. Pine and birch, they can bend a bit, and you can even like lift them a little, even on your own. But this ash was dense, and it was full of gravity. The chainsaw, a church member said as much as he went through one blade, and then, and then two reducing the weight into liftable chunks. Because that's one important way we can bear the weight. We can cut it up into smaller, more manageable sizes. And he and I piled them up against the fence. Where they have sat, friends, for years. This pile of ash, this pile of weight, waiting for a good fire pit night that never came, too busy, waiting for a free day when all I wanted to do was lift heavy things, which never came. And I was thinking, you know, such are our good intentions, aren't they? It's not as though the weight of the world, which is that other hardwood, doesn't keep pressing us down. Keep raining down its limbs. And I was thinking about this, like, election over there! Are we doing this again? And I was thinking, debate anxiety over here this Tuesday. How is it going to go? We got Gaza, the immeasurable tragedy, far away, but not far away. We still have Ukraine, right? I see a flag near my house when everyone put the flags up, the Ukrainian flags all withered and weathered from the storm, replaced now by Israel flags and remember Gaza flags. These flags, these symbols of our most present weight while left behind are the ones that are furled and faded, like us. And then we have all the stuff that you and I are carrying that no one knows about. They go unseen and unshared. They, we stack them up against the backyard fence, you and I do, where no one can see, where no one notices. Which is why I always try to remind myself and remind us to try to be kind. Because we never quite know what is going on with people down, as the poet once said, where the spirit meets the bone. But this summer, I decided to deal with the pile. Which required more lifting. Turns out it's how you carry it. I have some tips for us. Do you want to hear them? That's a rhetorical question because I'm going to tell you even if you said no. <laughs> the first tip about how to carry heavy stuff, ash or otherwise, take less of it on. Did you know that sometimes a wood pile is just a wood pile? Did you know, Nathan, that it doesn't have to be a metaphor? <laughs> For every damn heavy thing in the world that requires our attention and our big feelings. I learned this this summer when I read about this idea that I'm going give to give to us called empathic, say after me, empathic distress. Empathic distress which is just a fancy way of saying empathic distress is when you hurt for other, other people, but then you, are, you feel unable to help. You hurt for other people, but you don't know what to do, okay? 
here's what it might look like. You might be watching all the violence and the anger and the loss, like on the news, happening abroad, and you don't know what to do to respond. Do I give money? Do I get angry on social media? Do I make a post about it? Do I tell my friends? Do I go to a march? What do I do about it? Or maybe it looks like this. You have young people in your life, or maybe you are a young person, and you're trying to figure out how to tell yourself and your friends and other parents that the world is safe and people are still good. Or just for example, maybe you're a preacher. Just, just for example, everybody. And you look out at all of this, and you sometimes wonder to yourself when you're finishing your sermon on Saturday night, does anything I say like offer hope to people? Like what can I possibly say? Does this sound familiar? And so what happens when all of this sort of begins to, the woodpile of heavy things begins to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow, and as it does, we feel uncertain about how to respond. You know what I do? This is what I've done the last couple of years. I just stop looking at the pile. I'm just going to keep on walking and looking at the pile. We turn off the news. We avert our eyes. We become immobilized by the weight. Maybe we even become indifferent to the weight which actually prevents us from doing anything about the pile of ash against the fence or helping other people in the ways that we say we want to. Which leads us to our second tip. You ready? First tip, you can't take it all on. Second tip, you ready? We cannot take on someone else's weight, but we can help them be seen. Oh, I said to Karen this summer, I think it was like late June, that wood is so heavy. I'm so tired of doing stuff. The projects never end. Now, we all have superpowers, and it turns out that one of mine, did you know this, is martyrdom. Does anybody else have a big M under your shirt? <laughs> Super martyr. I like that no one is volunteering, which means that many of you know what superpowers I'm talking about. It has a heavy cape that we love to let our loved ones try to hold. Anyway, we've been married a long time. She's wise to my tricks. It's so important that we have people who are wise to us who can see us when we can't see ourselves, isn't it? She said, it sounds like you're tired. It was a long, hard church year, she said to me, and it was. It really was. A lot of loss here, you guys. She's like, dude, just chill, man, in the best spurs, uh, surfer spouse vibe she could give me. Just relax. Take a breath. I'll help you. It was just marvelous. I chilled. I took off my martyr suit. I put it up in my closet. I want you to tell me if you see me put it back on. It's very important you tell me. Because what I needed was not another co-conspirator, a lifter of heavy things. I didn't even need her to help me lift the logs. I just needed her to notice me. I just needed to be seen. Here's the thing. It turns out we don't need to feel someone's weight to help them carry it. This is radical. We don't need to absorb someone else's pain as though we're a giant empathic sponge. You know what happens when we do that? I can tell you because I've done it. We just get wrung out, right? I mean, but we can't give each other witness. It's like, here's what it sounds like. Pile of logs you gotta move, Nathan? 
Relax. I'll help you. Anxious about the election? Me too. Let's just tell me. Talk to me. Feeling helpless about gun violence or the kids in your life who don't feel safe? Tell me more. Worried about a medical test coming up? Talk to somebody. And so I got stuck into the wood pile, you guys. I took off my mutter suit. I got some flannel. It was July, but who cares? Because that's the uniform. <laughs> and I set aside how it was a symbol for all the weight in the world and how I set aside the notion that I was unable to do anything about it all. I set aside the indifference and I just relished feeling seen and I began to lift. The bark had separated from the trunk. It had been there so long. The rain and the weather had softened the gravity. Friends, there were spiders. <laughs> there were so many spiders. Mary Oliver does not talk about spiders in her poem. <laughs> And I first I tried to lift the big ones, and I was tempted, of course, when I was doing that by, by, the, by the uniform, super martyr, saying, this is the flip side of the martyr. Look how strong I am. Well, I did it all by myself. Look, Karen, I did it all. She's like, well, you did it all by yourself. Like, yeah, look at me. That's the other side of the super martyr uniform, isn't it? But then I almost crushed my toes. Another tip, help! It never hurts to, st to stop trying to be a hero. She came out to the yard. She said, um, these are too heavy for us to lift. Why don't we put some planks down across the yard to the new log spot and roll them? Brilliant! <laughs> they don't teach this in seminary, do they, Ian? <laughs> And so that's what we did. We worked smarter, not harder. Another tip. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Spiders. Rolling, rolling, rolling. We got all of these logs until the ash was against <laughs> the other part of the fence where I wanted them to be. <laughs> what did George Carlin say? I love his stuff. Life is just moving stuff to other places <laughs> and figuring out what to do with your stuff. But the point is, I got it to where I wanted it to be. I even put it in one of those firewood organizers, <laughs> these organizers for heavy things. I'm not gonna make it a metaphor. I'll let you do the work for me. And I just was like, the world outside is, is chaos. <laughs> Trump almost just got assassinated, but I have an organized pile of heavy things. <sighs> the point is, it took practice. Are you with me? It took practice. This whole moving of heavy things situation, it takes a ton of practice. Mary asks in the poem that, Amy, you read for us, have you noticed, have you noticed like there's even just a little bit of light, light, lighterness? I'm going to make up a word. Lightness to me, as I tell you. So speaking of promises and Sandy Hook promises, I'm making a new promise this fall because this fall, this fall is feeling heavy to me. Does it feel heavy to you? Whenever I hear that, I feel that, I know it's time to make a new commitment. Here are my promises to myself, and I want to invite you along with me. I am promising to uh, pay attention to my empathic distress, which is what happens when I take on everybody's stuff. And I feel pain as opposed to see pain. Big difference. When I feel indifferent, that is a cue to me and to you that you are feeling empathic distress. 
The other thing I'm committing to is noticing my super martyrdom uniform. And I want to keep it in my closet. Will you help me? Another promise I'm making. I am promising to ask for help. You can make a promise to ask for help. Instead of saying, woe is me, what I say to my spouse and to people who love me, I just need you to see me right now. I just need you to see me. And then, friends, I'm making this other promise, which feels like the most important promise I can make. I am promising to try to be kind. It's really hard because on the rotary this week, I almost lost my mind at somebody as I rode through it on my bicycle. I am practicing to be kind because being kind will not end the many crises happening in the world, but it can help someone else. It can do that. And when we do that, we can feel not indifferent, but actually strengthened to actually help a little bit more. That's where I feel like this starts for me in this season of heavy things. Be kind to each other. Be kind to yourself, right? Be kind to yourself. Turn off stuff when it just feels too heavy. Invite people in to help you carry the load. Pay attention to what's happening inside of you. It takes practice. It takes love. It takes, this is why we're here, it takes community. How about we say amen? Amen. Let's get through this fall, you and I, together. We're going to sing one more time. I'm going to lift my sister up. I invite us to rise and bite her spirit. The lyrics will be on our screens. And Katie, thank you again so much for doing your tech wizardry up in the loft. <laughs> And now just that screen is working for some reason. Let it go, Nathan. Don't feel like it's all of you up to fix. I'm going to lift my sister up. She is not heavy. I'm going to lift my sister up. She is not heavy. I'm going to lift my sister up. She is not heavy. If I don't lift her up, if I don't lift her up, if I don't lift her up, I will fall down. I'm going to lift my brother up. He is not heavy. I'm going to lift my brother up. He is not heavy. I'm going to lift my brother up. He is not heavy. If I don't lift him up, if I don't lift him up, if I don't lift him up, people
you carry but how you carry it books bricks ash grief worry you embrace it you balance it you carry it when you cannot and would not put it down so I went practicing have you noticed have you heard the laughter that comes now and again out of my startled mouth how I linger to admire 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 the things of the world that are still kind and maybe also troubled. Roses and the wind, the sea geese on the steep waves, a love to which there is no reply. Let us say together our call to ministry. We go forth into the world in peace to act with works of love, to affirm each person's dignity and to cherish living earth. So good to be with you, friends. So much love to you. We will uh, have fellowship downstairs. There's food. There's bagels, I think. There's other stuff. Yes, I'm getting nods. It's actual food. And then I invite those who are new. And even if you just want to, if you're not new, just come up and hang. Please don't make Ian and I just be up here by ourselves at 12 o'clock, okay? Just take a little while. And uh, just love to hear more from you and about you. Amen. <laughs>